good day, great tens, and welcome to this video that I'm going to be going through um, some exam tips for those of you who are going to be writing on Excel. Generally, the test should be um, this term around Excel. So um, I'm just going to focus on a few things that uh, usually do get asked. So first things first, um, let me just zoom in here. One of the things that you usually get asked for is to pop in a date and I'm just going to use today's date and I'm going to hit enter and you can see it displays like that. So we've got day, month, year. However, remember when you right click on there and you go down to format cells um, and you go to the number tab and we go to date, there are a number of different ways in which you can have your date displayed. So please um, just know where to go to if you need to change how it is displayed okay another one is when they ask you to insert a cell number there I'm inserting a cell number and you can see it doesn't display the zero however when I change that to text when I format the cell and I change the contents that's going to be popped in there to text I can do it this way or I can go up here to my number section and I can go to text click on text what's going to happen here is excel will now actually read the zero because it's thinking you know what this is all this is not just numbers it can be numbers and letters so it has to read everything and then you'll see the little green tab there it's just indicating to you that it has got formatting on it okay so that's another one of the things then let's just delete all of this um, let's go into some headings and i'm just going to that in there i remember with our headings you can see it's automatically aligned to the left so you can see when i click on this we can change our alignment in the alignment section and i can align it to the center both horizontally and vertically okay i can also go and change and i'm just going to highlight all of them and i'm going to change okay so the alignment is there and i can change over here the um orientation so there i can rotate it up i can rotate it down you know i can change any of those things okay again this will depend on what the question paper is asking you you might get a heading over here um they might say something like i'm just going to use an example learner info um just going to type anything in there <laughs> okay so it goes over so immediately what you want to do or what you normally do is to adjust the cell but that's not what they're asking you they might be asking you to merge the range let's take b3 through to f3 and to put that in the center so we would use the merge and center option from here obviously we can adjust the size they won't usually in the question papers ask you to change the background color they'll usually tell you to fill the cell with a particular color of your choice i can then go and fill it there and i can change my text color i can do the same for my headings here i can change that background color or fill it with a different color i can change the text color as well one of the things then with this that they will also ask you to do is to pop in borders so you can see at the moment there's no borders here so if I highlight that range and I go up here to my font section, remember it's home, font, and my borders, I can go and pop in, you know, a number of different borders. Um, I can then say, listen, I want to go to change the line color to yellow. Um, I want to change the line style as well. So you, you can do a number of things. We can go into more borders. You can see there I've just got more options as well. Again, I can go and change my color. I can change the width. I can say where I want it um, to be or not to be. And I can click OK. And there we go. I've popped in borders that have, you know, that have colors and are around there. So those are some of the things that you can do. Another one that they like to ask is, and I'm just going to use this as an example, um, the number 5.68. Now, why am I showing this? This might be the total of something. So one of the first things they'll ask is for you to change it into currency. Remember, we can go up here to our number section. There we've got currency and we can go and click there and say South African rands. So you can change it to dollars. Again, depending on what your PC has, there might be more accounting formats that you can look at. 
but generally it will be in the range. Okay? From there, um, if they ask you to change the decimals, so they want you to say, listen, man, we don't want decimals. We just want a single rand total, you know, a, a, just, just a whole number. You can do that, but I want you to have a look at this. Look at that. Not only does it take the decimal away, but it also rounds up the number. So rounding will come into effect, and you'll see when I take it down to one digit, it becomes six as a whole number. Okay. Let's try that with a different number. Let's go for three and let's see how this affects it. We go down, you'll see it's four and it remains five. So it'll round up, round down according to whatever the decimals are. But that is where you go and do it. Okay. Um, another one, I'm sure you will remember your formulas, min, max, sum and average. I'm going to go min, max sum and average remember with average what are we doing we're typing out the entire number ah not entire number uh, the entire word sorry it's because i'm busy with numbers here okay so um i'm going to just pop in some numbers there and then remember in order to do min i'm going to go equals min open my bracket and i can go and highlight my range and when i hit and when i close my bracket and hit enter it's going to give me the minimum or in other words the smallest amount or the smallest number in that range max is going to give me the largest number in that range sum is going to give me the total of all the numbers in the range and average is going to give me the average number of all of these together so the average over here is usually the total divided by the number of numbers and that would give me 57.28579 have a look at this i can go and move those decimals sorry wrong cell <laughs> okay there we go is it rounding yes yes okay and i can say my average is now 57.3 so do you see how what i just did um, actually helps me over there Right, then remember we can also add sheets over here at the bottom. Um, I can rename them to whatever I want them to be. I can also right click and I can change the tab color. Okay, again, these are things that will probably or most likely come in. Then, when I move over here to my bottom right hand corner and I look at my different views, you can see I'm on my normal view at the moment. When I move over to page layout view, I want you to have a look at something that happens when you scroll up. There you've got a header section. So if they ask you to add a header, I'm going to pop in my name over there. And my name is now in the header. And I can go and I can go and make it a bit bigger, change the color, make it bold, all these things. But it's in my header. All I do is once I type that in, click anywhere else, and I can go back to my normal view and that will make sure that I'm back to where I was. So in, in the normal view, you don't really see the header. You would have to go to the page layout um, view. And that is where you can insert uh, your header. And you can insert a footer as well. All right, moving back to this. So another thing that you usually get asked um, is to pop in something called conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to highlight all of these numbers and I'm going to apply conditional formatting. So this means that formatting will be applied to the numbers that meet the conditions. Okay, so I click on that. And I'm going to go highlight cell rules and I'm just going to do two examples. I'm going to do one with greater than. Okay, so with greater than it's saying here format cells that are greater than and let's say I'm going to format the cells that are greater than 55 and how do I want to format them with a light red fill with dark red text click OK and you can see what happens now if I highlight that again go to conditional formatting highlight rules and I say um, equal to and I use the number 54 and I said no well that one I want to format differently because I want to be able to see the differences and I'm going to use yellow click OK yes there is one like that i'm going to highlight it again and i'm going to say less than and we're going to go less than 54 and i'm going to use green for that click ok and 
there we can see in that cell range I've got three different conditional formatting um, items that have been applied to that one section. Green indicating numbers that are less than 54, 54 indicating that's the only one that equals 54 and the rest are higher than 55. Okay, so have we covered all that? Yes. Okay, now we can turn these things into a chart. Uh, we can pop in some more formulas. I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to just delete that one there and there. And then I'm going to use three formulas over here. Uh, I'm going to use count, count A, and count blank. Okay, and we're going to see what these formulas actually do. So with count, let's pop in count here. Let's open the bracket. Let's highlight our cell range, close our bracket, and hit enter. So what is it doing? It's counting the number five. But here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells. But have a look at this. Only two, three, only five of them have numbers in them. Okay, let's use the same formula. Let's use, sorry, count A. Let's use the same range, close our bracket, hit enter. Oh my word. Now why am I getting five again? <laughs> You're going to see <laughs> it's after this. Watch this. Count blank. I'm going to go count blank, open my bracket, highlight all of that, close it, hit enter. Hmm, I'm getting two. Now with count blank, why am I getting two? Because out of the seven cells, I've got two that have nothing in them. They are completely blank. Therefore, count blank counts the number of blank cells in a range, two. What about counting count A? So to show you the difference in this blank cell, in fact, in this cell over here, I'm gonna change this to the word text. Ah, do you see what happens now? Look what happened there. Count says four. Now why is that changed? Because four cells have numbers in them. Count A, says, well, there are five cells that have something in them, and count blank hasn't changed. So immediately, this tells us that the difference is as follows. Count counts the number of cells that have numbers in them. Count A counts the number of cells that has numbers and letters in them. So for example, if I go T5, it's going to count it. If I go T3, it's going to count that. There are now no more blanks. Count A counts 7 because all 7 have numbers in text. But count still only counts 1, 2, 3, 4. as 4 cells that have only numbers. So I'm going to take this and I want to convert this now to a chart. Okay. I know it's going to be a horrible chart, but that's fine. It's just to show you where you do this. So I'm going to highlight what I have over here. And where am I going to go to? I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to charts. I'm going to choose any chart, people, any chart. It doesn't matter. This is just for the purpose of this. And you can see, what have I done? I've just highlighted what I want to turn into a chart. In other words, my data series. Click on that. And I'm going to go for a chart over here. I'm just going to resize this. Whoa, too much. Okay. And there you can see, there's my chart. Now, usually what they will ask you to do is to take this and pop it onto, um, you know, the next sheet. And you can do that and then you can resize that. And on sheet one, I've got my data series that it's based on. But on sheet two, I've got the actual chart. So there you can see there are my labels. Um, I've got my legend. I've got my title, all these various things in place. And it's as simple as that to create my chart. I can then go and create another one if I want to and say, well, highlight the same area, insert, and let's go with a, let's see what we can choose. Okay, let's, our 3D Pi is not really going to fit what we need. Um, okay, let's go with a different bar chart, let's choose that one, and there again, there is my chart. Okay, so it's as simple as that to add a chart. Generally, this term, they won't ask you for too much regarding the chart, but um, if that is what you need to do, again, you can then go in here, you can pop in whatever title you want to. 
um, if you change anything over here it will change on the chart okay so if numbers change there um, then that's what will happen you'll see the change come through on the chart as well okay then someone decided to add a picture into your uh, spreadsheet and they want you to apply some sort of a border around it please remember when you click on your spreadsheet um, the tab you're looking for won't be there but when you click on the actual picture another tab will come up called picture format here you can add a picture border if you want to again you know you can adjust the weight you can say what the border must look like um, you know different colors all this type of thing you can also apply different formatting over here to your particular picture so you can decide well that's what it must look like the border must be yellow you know any of that but all of these things over here all these items they will apply specifically to that picture and you can move that picture around you can copy paste it you can cut it and paste it into your um, other sheet if you need to but that's basically how you'll do that the last thing i want to just touch on um, is actually two formulas the one is called rand and the other one is rand between okay so with rand if we use the formula which is equals rand open and close bracket we'll get a random number between 0 and 1 and you can see if I auto fill it that's what's going to happen I'm going to get a random number every time between 0 and 1 another formula that we use is a rand between when I put in equals rand between this is different now to what I did with equals rand okay so that's why it's giving me a problem here because I need to pop something in there I need to in other words give it conditions so I'm gonna go equals rand between and now I'm gonna say well between 1 and 3 okay so you see I put, put my first number in there separated by a comma and then hit 3 and it's still saying that is a problem what's the problem I need to put in a semicolon okay you can see there there's the difference right and now it gives me the number two but have a look at this when I auto fill it down it's giving me you know I've got three I've got one I've got three I've got two hmm here's my question when you look at the formula do the numbers that you are generating randomly between one and three include one and three yes they do okay so if I want numbers between one and five but I don't want to include 1 and 5. How on earth am I going to do that? Well, it's fairly simple. What you're going to do is you're going to pop in a number greater than these. So in, the, in this case, I will pop in 2 and I will pop in 4. Why? Because it's going to include 2 and 4. So the numbers I'm generating now, are there numbers between 1 and 5? Yes, they are. Do they include 1 and 5? No, they don't. Okay, so just be careful how they ask the question in terms of using RAND between. Are you going to be using or including the numbers that you are specifying or not? Because that's going to force you obviously to change things if you need to. Then also remember um, where we change our row height. Remember we can adjust our row height. We can adjust our column width. And if a column is too small or too big, remember we can just double click on there on the actual line here. You'll see my mouse pointer change um, and then it will automatically adjust to the widest item within that column. So grade 10s, these are my tips for your uh, upcoming exam, your prac with um, Excel. Please let me know in the comments um, what you are going to be tested on. If you know by now, you know uh, what you are going to be tested on. Let me know if there's something I need to do as a video and uh, I can do that quickly and upload that and give you some good um, prep work there. Okay, well, all the best uh, and good luck.